I'm a, a medical doctor, a sports medicine doctor, and I spent all my career taking care of uh, sports injuries. For 17 years, I was the club doctor of one of the most important and famous football team, Juventus football team. And uh, in this picture, I was very young, so much younger than today. And unfortunately, I'm not the one with the number 10 of his back. During the same period, I was the doctor of Juventus. I also worked as a private sport doctor, involved in uh, diagnosis and rehabilitation of sports injuries for all athletes, not only professionals. And uh, this extensive experience has allowed me to realize that the difference is too wide between the way we cure professional versus amateur athletes. Recent study underlined this gap. Professional athletes heal better than amateur athletes. In 2014, Claire Arden, an Australian researcher, considering all sports and all passions, showed that uh, only 65% of the patients who underwent anterior crusade ligament surgery returned to the same sports level as before. Only 65%. In contrast, Marcus Valden, a Swedish researcher, part of the UEFA injury study group, found that 93% of the UEFA Champions League football players returned to the same level as before after anterior crusade ligament surgery. This is due to a different type of care provided to professionals and amateurs. And I firmly believe that this gap could narrow, should narrow. The best care must be available to everyone. If we wish to touch on philosophical or social issues, we can say that the best care must be available to everyone for equality of rights to health. I try to be realistic and tell you that the best care must be available to everyone because sports injuries are very, very expensive. And they are expensive mainly for two reasons. First of all, they are expensive for the health of the athlete. Data shows that the recovery is not to be taken for granted after a, a severe sport injury. It's not obvious to have 100% recovery. And when the recovery is partial, is uh, insufficient, is not completed, the risk of ray injury is incredibly high. For example, in young, in young athletes, under 20, who underwent the anterior crusade ligament surgery, the risk of ray injury is 25%. One out of four goes wrong. The second main reason why sports injuries are very expensive is related to the real cost. One year ago, BBC Sport published on its website an insurance survey that showed that during the 2017-18 season, Premier League clubs paid 217 million pounds in salaries to injured players. Already 15 years ago, Suva, data from Suva, a national accident insurance company here in Switzerland, had registered that for amateur football, every single year, the insurance cost is about $130 million with 
more than 500,000 work days lost. So, how do we can reduce the problem of sports injuries while keeping a balance between the outcomes of professional and amateur athletes? The first answer is let's train more, much more, and be at our best before doing sport. Acknowledging the, the enormous cost of sports injuries, during the last 20 years, many prevention program, programs have been studied and proposed to reduce the incidence of sports injuries. The results of the prevention programs were really poor, both for professional and amateur athletes. For example, in the UEFA Champions League, during the last 10 years, the incidence of muscle and knee injuries is increasing. In Switzerland, recent data shows that despite the introduction and the implementation of uh, prevention programs and fair play measures in amateur football, there was an increase of contact and non-contact injuries. Very recently, something has changed significantly in terms of prevention. Once, the dogma was that intense training causes an increase of the occurrence of sports injuries. Therefore, there was thought that to avoid injury, one should train with a fewer intensity. No, no. In 2016, very recently, Tim Gabbett, a researcher of exercise from Brisbane, Australia, published a scientific article entitled The Training Injury Prevention Paradox. Should the athletes be training smarter and harder. For the first time, and very recently, it has been shown that physically hard, tough training can protect us from injuries. Now, I will share a personal story. This is the story of uh, Gianluigi Buffon, one of the most successful football goalkeepers. 22 seasons as a professional, many victories, including the FIFA World Cup, and five times best goalkeeper in the world. During the first match in 2010, during the FIFA World Cup in 2010 in South Africa, he had an acute disc herniation. Then he was operated. And after his surgery, he started an extremely intense rehabilitation program. And at that time, I was in charge of the medical department of Juventus and in charge of the, his recovery. During the first three months of rehabilitation, he went through 64 sessions of rehabilitation and pool. 134 sessions in gym, 23 on the field. A total of 221 sessions of rehabilitation with an average of about 2.5 per day. Gigi then uh, came back to the team gradually and returned to play after roughly six months. The back surgery, the intense rehabilitation, the recovery followed, introduced him to how important heart preparation is. And uh, here are the results. He lived his second sport career and uh, once again became the best goalkeeper in the world six years after his back surgery. But during my career, I have not only treated Buffon, 
over the last 15 years, I managed the rehabilitation of about 6,700 patients. And the average number of rehabilitation sessions of the operated patients I managed was 32. Imagine each single rehab session as a pill. For the same sport injury, a professional athlete takes 221 pills, while an amateur athlete takes 32 pills to cure the same disease. Uh, it's natural to answer to object that a professional athlete has many more motivations in terms of salary, contracts, reputation, and many advantages, time, money, experts, than an amateur athlete to have an excellent rehabilitation. I know this to be so true. I spent all my career experienced this. But does it seem right? Does it seem correct? If you have blood hypertension, if you have diabetes, if you have pneumonia, you basically use the same medicine all over the world with the same dosage, whomever you are. After a sport injury, and a professional athlete does 2.5 rehab sessions per day, whereas a amateur athlete does 2.5 rehabilitation sessions per week. An amateur athlete takes one-seventh of the entire dose of medicine at the end of his treatment. The key is you have to demand more. You deserve the same dose of medicine. You have to demand to be cured like an athlete. And uh, who should you turn to to get it? First, to the doctors. Second, to yourself. From the doctors demand uh, to complete the rehabilitation after sport injuries, to complete the recovery. Don't stop before the end. Don't interrupt it so, too soon. And from yourself demand the modern rehabilitation. It is fewer messages, lots of exercise. Don't wait for nature to heal you. Be active. This is how we can heal like them. And finally, here we are in Switzerland. Many of you are skiers. Remember, sport performance comes from you. It's up to you. So, don't waste your time. Start now, from tomorrow, maximum Monday, <laughs> to prepare yourself for the next winter season. Thank you.